Hey everyone, um, my name is Tegan Hovlin. I uh, just coming here quick with, with a quick video. Um, yeah, um, so I'm gonna just do a, a time of prayer here. Alert if you guys want to just uh, um, join with me, however it is that you <laughs> you pray. Um, so yeah, uh, Lord, we just come to you in this time of prayer, Lord, for uh, all these students, Lord, whether they are being directly impacted by this this, this virus or, or even if they're not, Lord, that you can just um, you know keep us safe, keep us healed. And Lord, for those that are being directly impacted, like, I, I pray that you can just keep them positive, Lord, and keep them safe and healthy, Lord, and that um, they can come out of this stronger and better. And Lord, for those that aren't being directly impacted, Lord, I pray for them too, that you can just keep them positive and, and, and healthy, Lord, and that, that uh, they can learn from this, Lord. And I pray for, for as, as a whole, Lord, that we can just uh, work together and stay positive and encourage each other. And that um, obviously this is a time that it's going to tear a lot of people down, but that you can, uh, you can work through us and... Uh, you know, we can hopefully reach people, Lord, and, and deal with this. And then when we are back together, we can come back stronger and, and just want more of you. So here we pray. Amen. I pray for healing in our world right now. I pray that you can heal everyone who is sick and um, just really put your hands on everyone in this hard time right now. I know we're going kind of back to square one, um, but I just pray that you can just continue to give us hope and give us joy through this hard time. God, I pray for the person on the other end of that screen. I pray that they know how loved they are by you, that they are chosen by you, that you, that your son died on the cross for them, for their sins. And I pray that as we're moving into this season of change with access being online for a little bit and schools being online and with the upcoming th holidays that everybody just realizes how important how important um you are how important their family is that they don't take those things for granted and i pray that we can all be back together at school and access and church really shortly in your name Amen. Hey guys, um, we know this looks a little bit different than normal. Um, just due to COVID-19, we are kind of having to change things up, change things up for the rest of November. So this is kind of how um, we get to do things. Uh, lots of different ways to um, worship, lots of different people kind of taking over this area. But we're so excited um, to be able to share some time with you this right now whatever time of the day it is um and so we just have a few songs that we want to share with you and i myself just want to encourage you um to still worship how you would normally worship if you were in um the zone right now um just kind of take this time seriously and let the lord speak to you uh, however he sees fit and however um he want he's wanting to talk to you right now so we just encourage you to just yeah kind of do your own thing and just see where the Lord takes it. Um, there's so many different ways that we can worship, whether that is in person or over a video, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, we're just so excited to um, share some time with you guys. So yeah, this first song is called The Blessing.
So I know that this time is like super crazy with um, uncertainty and COVID and everything. Uh, in this song, like I usually, it reminds me of Easter a lot. With like Jesus was like risen from the dead and um, like came out of the tomb and was like you know alive. And um, I think that's like one thing that we need to remind you like, these days is like it's not just it's not just on Easter when Jesus is alive. Like Jesus is alive today. He's alive. Um, in our circumstances in life, when COVID is rushing all around, when our family is passing away, when things just aren't seeming like they're going our way anymore, um, it's just a great reminder to just remember that like, Jesus is alive, and um, you know He's not dead. He's He's living in our lives and breathing, and I think that's just like a good reminder, uh, just to remember, like, hey, this is who my God is. So he's not dead. He's like here with me. So we're gonna sing a song called Friend.
Okay, so this last song is called um, Victory is Yours, and there's um, a line in here, let's see if I can find it, um, it's actually just the chorus, and it says, the victory is yours, you're riding on the storm, your name is unfailing, though kingdoms rise and fall, your throne withstands it all, your name is unshaken. And I feel like that's, not to bring up politics, but I feel like that's so key to like our world today with um, the election, and even just COVID, and just life and challenges. And seasons in general, like it's so easy to think that um, 
God is kind of just non-existent in this time because of the results of things or you know you fill it in for whatever season you're in but I just think it's so cool that this this is just so key and it's just saying that God the victory is yours you're in feeling though kingdoms rise and fall your throne withstands it all and I think there's so much power in that and it's just so cool to see how God is like revealing himself during this time of our lives and so I don't know just this last song I just want to encourage you guys to Again, like I said before, just like really take it in and make God um, the, <laughs> the highest point of your throne and your world and where you need to have him. I just encourage you to put him there and really that should be at the center of everything. And so, yeah, the song is so good. It's one of our favorites. And so, yeah, if you know it, just sing it out wherever you're at. <laughs>
I just thank you so much for this time of worship. I thank you that we can still gather, um, I mean, not in person, but God, that we can still meet with you and just, um, yeah, just grow deeper in who you want us to be. God, I just pray that these songs um, were a blessing and that people can remember them as they go into their day. And just remember that, God, that you are, like, you are victorious, God. We don't have to worry about what comes. We don't have to worry about tomorrow. We don't have to worry about even our next step, God, because you are going to walk with us and you're going to follow us, God. And I just pray that we start to live like that. Start to live out of fear. Start to live um, out of fear of the world and more of fear in you, God. Like, awe and wonder of who you are, God. And I just pray that we um, yeah, stop living like the world and just start living um, with a heart that's ready to walk in victory, um, just like you've called us to go. Amen. Welcome to Axis. Thank you, Gabby and Grace and Anna for leading us in worship. I love switching it up. That's why we do something almost different. I would say every single week at Axis because it, it keeps things fresh, right? You get bored doing the same, same, same thing over and over and over again. So thanks for leading us in worship in a staircase. Thanks for being willing to come in and, and record that to be able to, for us to have even live worship. I don't know, last week I was jamming with Tyler leading us all throughout the week. I would skip the message, skip the announcements, cruise on past all that stuff and just listen to worship and I know I'll be able to do the same this week just and that's I get I, that's a blessing of the online church online youth group and if you're watching this right now just like I would say if you're in person it shows something about your character and about your heart that you're tuning in online taking time out of your busy but non-busy week to Spend some time to grow in your faith. Spend some time to listen, maybe for some character development. Maybe you saw the logo of this childish series that we're in and you're like, what? What in the world? Why are high school students talking about this? Or maybe maybe you don't know why you're watching and something grabbed your attention, but I'm glad you're here. But I really do think that it, this makes a difference by you tuning in in this online platform. And yes, it is different. Yes. Maybe we don't like every aspect of this, but this is where our world is at right now. This is what we think is best for us to stay healthy and for us to move forward. And this is what we're doing for the time being. And so just take it as it is. We're meeting online. We're meeting virtually. And so take advantage of this opportunity to unplug maybe a little bit, maybe refocus your mind, knowing that the church should be outside the walls, knowing that, yes, it is necessary for us to gather in person, but at the same time, we need to learn what it looks like for us to go outside the walls and be the church. If the church wasn't meeting regularly on Sunday mornings, how can you and I be the church in our community, in our sports teams, in our schools? Even though I know the churches aren't the only thing that are shut down, other things are as well, but we can continue to be the light of Jesus, the hands and feet of Jesus in in our in our spheres of influence, let me say that. So we're starting our second week of this childish series that we're in. This is our last night talking about this. But before we do, I got this. I know it's kind of backwards for you guys, but this is the memory verse for November. I don't have it memorized. That's the challenge for this month is to memorize Ephesians chapter 4, 29 through 32. And I'll throw it up on the screen, but it says this. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption, but get rid of all bitterness, all rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. And I know maybe you think, hey, we're not even in person this month. Why would I memorize this passage in Ephesians? Why would I kind of waste the time to do that? And my challenge is 
memorize this passage of scripture and then continue doing it, writing the, these words, these truths on your heart and so that they can be ingrained in your mind on the tips of your tongue so that you can use this to your advantage as you go throughout your life. It's so important. It's, I think, a lost thing that, that not many people do, but I think it's so, so valuable. But I'm here in the nursery recording this this message for you guys as we talk about this childish series. We talked and kicked it off last week talking about when us and the desire, the need that Jesus talks about to have this childish spirit. And we looked at that a little bit and we talked about how the passport to the kingdom of God is by being childlike. And I wasn't talking about the immaturity of a child, that, that the silliness, the funniness that often you think about when you think of childish. But what I was talking about, there was four things that I mentioned. The first one is, is to have this sense of wonder, wonder of God, this wonder of God and who he is and what he's called and asked of you. And the second thing is to live in this unquestioning trust of him. To live in this unquestioning trust. I have my notes down here. So if you see me looking down, that's why. But this unquestioning trust, just like a kid has, a child has. The third thing is the urge to obey what he asks you and I to do. What he's calling us to do. This urge to obey. And we we don't ask the questions. We we don't overthink it. We, it's like he asks us to speak to this person. He asks us to start this. He asks us to to pray on this person's behalf and, and we do it because there's this urge to obey. And then the last thing is to forgive and to forget. It's this sense of knowing that we've messed up, but we've forgiven ourselves. Knowing that there's people that we love and people that we even hate that have messed up. And instead of bitterness and anger and rage, like some of the things we talked about in that passage of scripture, we know that we need to forgive and forget. So today we're in Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. Let me read that. It says, one day some parents brought their children to Jesus so that he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on their heads and blessed them. So in this passage of scripture, Hebrew mothers were accustomed to bringing their children in with the regard, with the hope that they would be blessed by the presidents of the synagogues who would then place their hands on them and bless them. And after the father of the child says this certain phrase, he, led, he would lead the elders one by one that they would bless the children. And, and they would pray that the, this person would be famous in the law, be faithful in marriage, be abundant in the works that they do throughout their life. So this was a tradition of the day, almost like for some of you, I know within our youth ministry, or maybe if you're watching and you're not a part of Axis, you might have been confirmed through another church. This is a custom, a tradition in some churches. But these parents then witness Jesus and they're curious. They're like, hey, I've heard about Jesus. I want Jesus to perform this blessing for me. And so this is where we see the disciples in this passage. They get a little frustrated. And it says this in verse 14, for the kingdom of God belongs to those. And there's a few different meanings. One of the biggest ones that I want to focus on today is the child and the powerlessness of a child in society that day. Children didn't really have any authority during that time, none whatsoever. But Craig Keener said this, he says, children were loved, but were socially powerless. The high infant mortality rate meant that they were physically powerless as well. Many dying before attaining maturity. Eager to get on with the busyness of setting up the kingdom, the disciples then have little time for people who do not wield political power. 
And so because they were children and, and because these parents wanted Jesus to bless the children and the children having no political power, the disciples were like, no, 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 no. We don't want the children. Jesus doesn't want the children. Get the children away. And so in this passage, the meaning that we see here that Jesus is trying to have the disciples understand, have these people, these parents, these children understand is that without Christ, we are powerless. We can do nothing. And he's talking about this childish manners, these childish behaviors that we as Christ followers need to have. And I think this is so important. And this is what I want us to learn and get at today because I, I think it's crucial for, under, for us to understand that children were powerless in that society. But also as high school students, as a 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grader, even parents that could be watching this, even myself, we're powerless in our society as well. And I know sometimes if we think, you know, if I just had some more money, if I just was famous on Instagram or on YouTube, if I had some success, like when I'm famous for a sport that I play or something that I posted online, or maybe it's once I get this certain job, then I'm going to gain this power. And then that's how I'm going to do what God's called me to do. Like I'm not going to be able to use my influence Say, let's say on my YouTube channel, because I only got 15 subscribers, it's when I have a couple million, that's when I can really make a difference. Or maybe in my position at hy V, I work at hy V, pushing carts into the store. And it's like, yeah, this is just a stepping stone. This isn't what I really want to do. So don't worry about my influence there. It's when I get the CEO position that I'll really make a difference. And we think it's based on our position in society that allows Christ's power to, to be uh, utilized through us or maybe manifested in our community and in, in our spheres of influence because of our position in society. But in reality, without Christ, we are powerless and can do nothing. It's as simple that, as that. Without Christ, we're powerless and can do nothing. And then in this passage that we read this evening or this morning, whenever you're watching this, like Anna said, we're provided with this beautiful picture as Jesus illustrates the base need for re receiving the kingdom. This is verse 15. It says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. The Lord here holds up a little child as a model for trusting, as a model for simple and loving obedience like a child you need to be in order to enter the kingdom of God. And this gives us this example to shoot for. As a high school student, this gives us an example to, to shoot for. Hopefully, it's one that you can look at and you say, I can do that because I was a child and I'm, I'm, I'm maybe not an adult quite yet, but I'm maturing. I'm, I'm a young adult and so I can trust like a child. I can have simple obedience like a child. I can love like a child. And that's why it's this beautiful picture for us as Christ followers to do. And even those that don't love Jesus to know there aren't these super high standards as a follower of Jesus, really. It, it's simple. Love like a child. Follow like a child. Trust like a child. Do as a child would. Childish is what Jesus says. And the, the point that I want to get at is the powerlessness and the total dependency of a child. You guys all know, maybe you have brothers or, or sisters or younger siblings, or you, you know of a children that you see at pretty much everywhere. Well, the powerlessness and the total dependency that a child has is a picture for the believers, a Christ followers practice in the kingdom of God to be childish. And for us, older or more mature, it's this beautiful way for us to properly view the salvation that God offers to all of us. And then it's time for us to, to understand this plea that we see in this passage. It says, truly, I'm saying to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God in some manner as a little child will positively never enter into it. It says, truly, I'm trying to make this as clear as can be. And later in this first, le this first letter, Simon Peter writes, 
reminding the believers to maintain the character of a child that brought them into this faith in order to grow currently as a part of the kingdom. And I think it's beautiful even to think of this childish manners that are the childish way of life that we need to have to enter the kingdom of God. Because I look at a child and I also see this huge heart, this huge mind, this huge energy to grow and continue to be better, continue to ask questions why and to seek the answers and to become more and more better version of their, themselves every single moment of their life. And religion teaches us to lay aside whatever fake that we tend to pick up and put on. It's the simple honesty and openness of children, though, that allow us to take off the masks, allow us to put the fake down and just be real and to be vulnerable. And I see this every day in my children. And, and it's like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick you up after school today. I'll say to one of the girls in there, I know, I want mom. Or let's go, I, you know, we're going to go to the park and let's go to this one. I really like that one. And then why do you like that park? That park's, that park's lame. And I just see this vulnerability and this honesty and this openness that children have that I know that I need to have with my accountabilities, that I know I need to have in my relationship with God. Because so often I'm like, God, I won't allow you into this portion of my life because this is mine, but you can have this one. This one's open. This one's closed off. But so, so many times, time after time, I, I think if I only would have opened up a door and allowed God in, even though he already knew what's going on inside I feel like my, my matters, my, my plans, my future, my past would be so different. And so I just think of this childish way of living. The powerlessness and the total dependency of a child is this beautiful picture that you and I, as believers, need to practice in order to get into the kingdom of God. And one note that I wrote down is, there's no child Holy Spirit. I heard this recently and I thought this was beautiful. There's no child Holy Spirit. There's no high school Holy Spirit. There's no adult Holy Spirit. There's one Holy Spirit and we, and we have access to that same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead living in us. And I think that's so important for us to know. It's not like this Holy Spirit. So once you get a job, once you graduate high school, once you get married, once you do this, do this, do this, once you've been to church so many times, that's when this Holy Spirit, the secret Holy Spirit is activated. Or maybe your Holy, your Holy Spirit is immature over here and you need to wait till the adult Holy Spirit. No, there's only one Holy Spirit and we have this incredible power. But we need to understand that powerlessness of a child that the total dependency of a child is this perfect picture of us in our relationship with God, in us, in how we enter the kingdom of God. We're to be like a child in our hearts, not to be childish in our behavior. Again, I can't say stress that enough in this series. This is not a be immature and act like a child. No, there's, there's so many things we can learn from a child when it comes to our hearts and, and our minds instead of our behavior. Just one story, Sid and I went to a wedding this past weekend and we did some video for a, a couple friends that got married, but we didn't bring any kids. And we were gone from front Friday, Friday and Sunday, Friday. And we came back to pick up Briggs. And we, my parents live in this split level home and we came in on, on this level and Briggs is upstairs and we couldn't see him, but we, we yelled his name. And he comes running from around the, the, around the wall and he sees us for the first time in a couple days. And you should have, I wish we would have recorded his face. He was so excited to see us, almost drooling and crying with excitement and joy because it had been so long in his world. And, and, I, and I talked to Sydney about this recently this week. And I think, how cool would that be, even for me personally, if I compare that to my relationship with the Lord? To my relationship with Jesus? Do, do I greet him like that? Do I have that much excitement and energy and motivation to even spend time in his presence? And I think oftentimes, no. Oftentimes, I'm, I'm like how I was with Briggs on Friday. I'm, I'm ready to maybe be away from him for a while. I, may, I maybe need a break because of whatever stressful week I've had. 
But I think of Briggs and how I missed him and how I, I was so excited to see him and I was almost nervous and giddy when we pulled into the driveway. And I thought, hey, in this childish behavior, what if I was like my son with me as his father? What if I was like Briggs with my heavenly father and said, yes, Jesus, I'm excited to be in your presence. Yes, Jesus, I, I, I'm nervous about what's next. Maybe I don't feel like I'm ready or I'm equipped, but I'm gonna do what you're calling me to do. Maybe, maybe, Lord, you know, I don't know this next season that you're calling me into, but I'm gonna be faithful and I'm gonna have this unquestioning trust. I'm gonna be bold in what you're asking of me next. This is how we're to greet our heavenly father with our arms wide open, yelling and, and crying and excited and just to be vulnerable and real knowing that our God is full of power and we're powerless knowing that he's the one that we can depend on no matter COVID or no COVID no matter if it's the worst or the best year of our life no matter if we've lost loved ones and we feel like we're isolated and alone or whether you know we're, we're going into one of the the most fruitful seasons of our life. No matter where we're at, we serve a God that's powerful, that has everything in control. We, we serve a God that is dependable and is faithful. And even as we look at Ephesians chapter four and look to memorize that in other passages of scripture, this is why we do that. So we can understand that we serve a God that forgives, forgave me. And because of that, I can forgive other people. That we, so we serve a God that's faithful and I can remember that and I can, and I can rest in that in how I operate every single day. So I'm going to pray. There's some discussing, discussion questions after this that you can look over and maybe prep before you go into your, your Zoom calls or your FaceTime meet, meetups with your small group. But just really encouraging you guys today, whenever you're watching this, that God's powerful. Even when we feel like we're powerful, we do not have things in control most of the times. And, and a lot of the times, if you're like me, my life seems chaotic, but I do know that I'm steadfast in my relationship with a God that is powerful, in a, in a relationship in a God that never has failed, that is continuously faithful in my life. And so I'm going to strive to be more childish when it comes to my heart so that I can do these four things like I talked about earlier so that I can have this sense of wonder of God, that I can live in this unquestioning trust of him so that I can have this urge to obey him, whatever he's asking and calling me to do. And so that I can forgive and forget and not be bitter because we serve a powerful God. We serve a God that just asks, asks of our total dependency on him and he'll take care of the rest. Let's pray. God, we sit here. We sit here like a child would do. And maybe if we were thinking about a child right now, the child would be like, okay, I'm bored. Let's go to the next thing. But I pray, God, that even in our faith, when we're, when we're ready for the next thing and we're maybe jumping ahead of your will, jumping ahead of what you've asked us to do, I pray that you just give us a time out. <laughs> and so I... I'm asking that you make it clear to us what you have next for every student. I pray for miracles to happen. I pray for, for the, the sick to be healed in your name. God, I pray that you direct us, give us wisdom, give us, give us peace. Just heard from students this week that, that are sick. I've heard from students this week that just are full of anxiety about what's next or maybe feeling isolated because of all the things that have canceled. God, you're powerful. You're, you're in authority. You know what's next. And I pray that you meet us where we're at. God, we're, we're trusting in you. In your name, amen. Students, thanks for watching. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Let me know if you need anything. But we'll see you next week on Virtual Access. Hey guys, so on December 16th, we're all supposed to wear Christmas pajamas or an ugly sweater. There might be a prize, but I don't actually know for sure, but there might be a prize. Hey, how's it going everyone? Um, I have an announcement, uh, big stuff conference.
June 20th through July 2nd. Uh, that will be in Panama City Beach, Florida. Uh, we will be flying. It costs us $600. You will have an opportunity to fundraise. Um, you can get it down to like $150 or less. That will be some work though. Um, you can wish to bring extra money if you'd like, buy like souvenirs or something. Um, I hope everyone can come. Uh, it will be a blast. Have a good day. Hey, people. So my announcement is that the winter retreat is sometime in January. Um, it's going to be like $80 and it's just a weekend away for some spiritual growth and you know it's going to be super fun, so exciting. Um, I'm really excited. I'm going to be there. You guys should be there and it's the best time of the year so make sure you're there.